So when you are a Muslim and you are practicing dreadlocks or you are living dead dreadlocks yeah. and this hadith is authentic, whoever imitates a people, then he is one of them. You see, one can say that, you know, having dreadlocks, it is a sign of a true African. So what is the stance of this? It has never been part of African culture and it is an introduction here. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Ustazi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just a quick one. Today, alhamdulillah, um, I had Sheikh Tintumba in um, a car, and this is not a well organized interview. But inshallah, we will improve upon Ya Ustazi. Inshallah. Ustazi, uh, I want to take this quick note to ask just a question. And the question here is about uh, living dreadlocks as a Muslim. As a Muslim. Yes, I have a lot of friends. Some of them have dreadlocks and they have they are, they raise a lot of reasons. And so uh, we actually want to know what Islamic ruling is on that. And then um, relating to Hadith and Quran and uh, prophetic teachings. Ya Ustazi, thank you very much and welcome to Stories of Dawah. Oh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah wa ba'd. It's a great privilege to, to be here with you on Stories of Da'wah. And we send our special greetings and salutations to all uh, your viewers and followers. And we stand by glorifying Allah and seeking his salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who Allah sent to teach us this beautiful religion, a religion that teaches piety, righteousness, and noble standards. Standards that make a Muslim distinguished in a society. Oh. And the issue of dreadlocks or a man leaving uh, his hair in a way uh, that uh, looks like dreadlocks, uh, his position in Islam is what the question is about. Oh. And we need to get it clear that. Uh, the Holy Prophet ﷺ was very keen to make his followers and uh, to make his followers and Muslims distinguish and distinct from other people. Mm. So whatever practice that is not part and parcel of Islam or that is part and parcel of the faith of other people, mm. generally the Prophet gave us such principles that will make such practice forever forbidden for Muslims to follow. Oh, cool. The Holy the Holy Prophet ﷺ says that man tashabbaha bi qawmin fa huwa minhu whoever imitate a people then he is part of them we know very well that if you look at uh, a religion called Rastafarianism and Rastafarianism is a religion when you look at the world's religions, minority religions Rastafarianism is one of such religions and the prophet for such a religion is Hil Salasi that is Prince Salasi uh, so he was born in Ethiopia then he visited Jamaica, he was, crowned, he was crowned the Messiah of Africa oh. and their main objective is to restore the black nobility oh. and to fight for the black cause. Oh. Now Rastafarianism is one of the ways they make themselves distinguish from other people. Oh. It is part and parcel of their religious you practices. Mean dreadlocks is one of the ways yes. Rastafarianism make themselves unique? Yeah, unique. Okay. So dreadlocks is part and parcel of the teachings and the teachings of Rastafarianism. Okay. So when you are a Muslim and you are practicing dreadlocks or you are living dead dreadlocks, yeah. it's like you are copying and imitating yeah. uh, the Rastafarianism okay. and that is not allowed according to the hadith that says that man tashabbaha bi qawmin for huwa minhum. And this hadith is authentic. No. That whoever imitates a people, then he is one of them. Yeah. So when you are a Muslim, you don't try to imitate the lifestyle of other people okay. or other religions. Okay. And Rastafarian, Rastafarianism is a religion and uh, living dreadlocks is part and parcel of their religious yeah. uh, practices yeah. and what makes them distinguished. Yeah. So when a Muslim you practice dreadlocks, yeah. you are imitating Rastafarianism as a religion yeah. and that is a condemnable act according to the hadith of the Prophet You see, so Ustaz, um, some raise the um, statement that you know, there are some people who are also part of the Rastafarianism, yes. but they don't leave dreadlocks. Yes. So he, also a Muslim, but leaving the dreadlocks doesn't make him a Rastafarian. Yes, if somebody is a Rastafarian, but most of the times Rastafarian, they leave dreadlocks. Okay. But however, 
if there's a Rastafarian who does not leave dreadlocks, yeah. then that is just like a Muslim who does not leave the beard, even okay. though the Prophet said, yeah. leave the beard yeah. and trim the moustache. Okay. But you find a Muslim who maybe due to one reason or the other, yeah. is not able to leave the beard. No, no, no. So that doesn't mean that uh, leaving the beard is not part and parcel of the teachings of Islam. Islam. Okay. So okay. yes, okay. if there's a Rastafarian who does not leave dreadlocks, that yeah. doesn't mean that leaving dreadlocks is not part and parcel of the teachings of Rastafarianism. Rastafarianism. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay, I think um, that is very, very understanding. So just because you uh, you don't leave your beard doesn't mean the beard is not part of Islam. Islam. And then just because you you left your dreadlocks doesn't mean that it's not an act of Rastafarianism. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. So the question I want to ask is that um, a lot of my brothers have ma made it clear to me that there are some scholars who say that there is no direct hadith or direct uh, ayah in the Quran that prohibits Rastafarianism. Sheikh, how true is this and how is this relevant to our discussion? We also, and also that is per also my research. Yes. Per your research? Per my research, I have not come across that. So I really want to know this. Alhamdulillah, in our previous discussion, no. we spoke about dreadlock, uh, we spoke about Rastafarianism no. being a religion. Okay. It's one of the world's religion. And I mm. mentioned that about one million followers. No. Of uh, there are one million people who are Rastafarians. No. Some are all over the world, no. and Rastafarianism has an origin. It has a prophet, and they have codes of conduct. No. And among the way they look unique among people is wearing dreadlocks. No. So Rastafarian alone, being a religion alone, is enough as a proof that shows that it is a different religion. Mm. And a Muslim cannot be in two religions at the same time. No. No. Or the Islam kafa. Enter completely into the religion of Allah yeah. without following the footpaths of Shaitan, as no. Allah said in Surah Al Baqarah. No. And the other issue is dreadlocks. No. People may say that there's no direct proof that shows that a person should not be, uh, it's not allowed for a person, somebody to wear dreadlocks, no. and that the hadith of the Prophet that shave all or you leave all, yeah. do not, it is only against shaving part of your hair no. and leaving part of your hair. No. But there are there are many, many other hadiths. No. Probably the, the more you do your research, the more you come across it. No. No. In a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, no. that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says that Man kana lahu fal mm. This hadith was reported by Abu Dawood wa Sahah wa al Albani no. and has been authenticated by Albani in Sahih Abi Dawood. No. He says that Whoever is blessed with her, he should honor it. Mm. And among the way of honoring her, mm. in the custom of the Arabs who mm. understood the messenger of the Prophet, no. is not wearing dreadlocks. Mm. It mm. is about oiling it and combing it no. once a while. No. That is a way of honoring the hair. No. Again, in the hadith, it is mentioned that and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ata ala qawm. He came upon a people. No. Then he advised a, a man he saw, no. he advised him disheveled. Mm. Then he advised him that he should honor. You mean he saw him, his hair disheveled? Disheveled. Okay. Yes, he saw his hair in a very disheveled manner. Okay. And he advised him that whoever has been blessed with hair, mm. he should honor it mm. as already passed by in the hadith. No. Again, Imam Malik reported in Al Muatta. Al Muatta mm. is one of the known books of hadith. In mm. fact, the first book of hadith that was written no. by it was by Imam Malik. No. May Allah be pleased with him in Medina al no. He said that mm. uh, the Messenger of Allah was in the masjid one day, no. and a man entered the masjid no. with a very disheveled hair. Mm. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam The Messenger of Allah indicated that he should go out, go out. of the masjid. So the man went to the masjid. Mm. He left out. He mm. left the masjid. No. And then he came back, he understood that it was the nature of his hair that the Prophet hated. Mm. So he went back, organized his hair, combed it and oiled it and came back. Yeah. And when he came back, the Prophet commented that, أَلَيْسَ هَذَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَنْ يَأْتِي أَحَدَكُمْ وَيَتْرُكُ رَأْسَهُ كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسِ رَأْسِ الشَّيْطَانِ That is this not better that than one of you leaving his hair yeah. and he will come as if he it is the head of shaitan mm. he will come yeah, with yeah. his hair as if his head is the head of shaitan these hadiths that talk about how the prophet guided people on their with hair yeah. and that the prophet did not accept that any one of his companions no, no. will leave his hair in a very disheveled manner no. is a sign 
and a clear evidence that mm. wearing dreadlocks is not uh, one of the ways of honoring the hair. Uh, uh. It's one of the ways of honoring the hair. Uh, uh. Somebody may say that the dreadlocks makes your hair very organized. Mm, mm. Some people may so organize say, it. Yeah, because there's, there's, some people believe, uh, believe that when they say disheveled, having dreadlocks, they, they leave dreadlocks and, you know, they oil it and they arrange it very well and put it back there. So it is not disorganized. Yes. So what is the stance on that? Yes, in this case, as I said, the prohibition of dreadlocks. No. According to our humble opinion, the no. prohibition of dreadlocks no. is coming from many, many perspectives. Number no. one, from the perspective of imitation. No. And this no. is a very broad concept in Islam, no. in Islamic no. jurisprudence, no. imitation. No. If a practice belongs to a particular group of people, no. imitating them no. makes is, is prohibited. No. According no. to that authentic hadith we narrated before, that the Messenger of Allah said, Man tashabbaha bikawmin for wa minhum. Whoever imitate a people is one of them. No. Imitate a people is one of them. No. Another way that it is prohibited is if it is an action is done by and the opposite sex. Is no. a, if an action is done only by women. No. If you try to do that, it's as if you are trying. There are those the prophet referred to as those who try to be women among men. No. This no. is so another way it is prohibited. No. No. So it is prohibited because it is a sign, an attribute, and a religious practice of Rastafarianism. No, no. And copying it means that you are copying a religion, no. a religious practice of Rastafarians. No, no, no. And a Muslim is not allowed to do that. No, 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 it's not no. allowed to do that. Okay. Okay. And another way is the guidance given by the Prophet to mm. honor her, mm. it doesn't fall within that, uh, that, that range, range okay. that range according to our humble opinion. Mm. So Stasi, just a clock for this, I want to ask one more. You see, one can say that you know having dreadlocks is a sign of an african mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we see this um jamaicans and things some of them having dreadlocks and we think or some of us think it is a sign of a true african so what is the stance of this subhanallah yani, historically no. dreadlocks has no. never been part of african culture no. No. and uh, when you look when you go back no. uh, great grandfathers no they will even chase out somebody who wear dreadlocks to their house. Allah. You will never stand a chance of mm. being entertained in a house if mm. you enter there with dreadlocks. Mm. Or to even marry, nobody's going to marry the daughter to you for wearing dreadlocks. That's true. That's and so it has never been part of African culture. And it is an introduction. Hill Selassie himself, as mm. I mentioned, no. is just uh, around, he was born in the 1980s. No. In the 18 around the 1880s he no. was born no. and then how can that become a part parcel of african uh, culture, culture. No. Mm. and in a society today when you no. want to know something is part of our culture look at the society today no. even dreadlocks they are still they are still struggling to get it into the society no. the society sure. today still look at people with dreadlocks as though they are backward people mm. they are criminals excuse mm. me and that's not that's how people look at it no. People, when they see someone with dreadlocks, they no. think about an arm robber, they no. think about a weed smoker, and That's they think true. about all the negative qualities, no. even though that person may not be characterized with such qualities. That yeah. person may not be an arm robber, that person may not be a weed smoker, that person may not be a drug dealer. That's true. But the society alone, by coming with that, no. with dreadlocks, no. you are classified into something category no. of people with negative no. uh, classification. No. No. And uh, you will never see people who are honored in the society mm. wearing dread dreadlocks. Mm. This is very important. So Islam take all this in, into consideration. Mm. Customs, mm. a custom plays very Im important role mm. in Islamic in the Islamic jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Okay. So it's, Islam identify custom, mm. but there are certain custom. If a custom goes against Islamic mm. practice, then mm. Islam forbid that. Forbid so let's okay. look at our custom here in Ghana no. or any other place in the world. No. You see people in honor, no. people in honorable positions. No offices and other places, governmental uh, positions, wearing dreadlocks, hardly could you see that. Yes, yes. So now, that shows in, that... In Ghana here, I know one MP who claims to be a Rastafarian, but he, he didn't leave the dreadlocks. He didn't leave the dreadlocks. He's, he's a Muslim. He claims he's, he's a Rastafarian a Muslim. because he speaks a little bit of Patwa. A part of, uh, yeah. He said yeah. that he's a Rastafarian. Yes. And he, he just had the dreadlocks he doesn't leave. Exactly, because <laughs> leaving it alone you're not going to have a good image in no, parliament or no. in your constituency. No, no, yes. no, no. So, Sheikh, um, I think this is very true because I realize that it's very hard in Ghana here 
and people can tag this as discriminatory because uh, Ghana here, when a person wears dread and he comes to uh, seek a woman's and in marriage, barely did they give the, them. They are going to suck him out. Yes, yes. Unless he shows money. Him time. Yes. Unless he shows money. If like he, he shows money. money uh -huh. But even nah, then. They'll, they'll, the money would be what is working, but people will still have reservation with, with regard to such marriage. That's true. That's and true. mostly, we see, excuse me, mm. you're going to find people who deal in dra uh, the internet fraud, no, no, no. Uh, known as, uh, yeah. what's the word? Is, Sakawa you, is it Sakawa? Uh, you see them in Yahoo that category. Boys. Yahoo Yahoo boys. Boys. Yahoo Yahoo boys. Boys. So you will see them uh, are people, one way or the other, in that category of having dreadlocks yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And the society have the way, the negative way they look at them. Yeah. So a good natured person yeah. who uh, probably want to go around his life yeah. and he'll be looked upon as a very good person. Yeah. Immediately you jump into having dreadlocks, yeah. you are allowing people to judge you wrongly, yeah. which is not, which may not necessarily be the way you are, yeah. because yeah. that practice yeah. is the dress of some people. Immediately yeah. you wear that dress, you are yeah. classified as part of such people. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm learning a lot today because I've heard this statement and it, it really makes sense here. That statement was that don't do something and don't cause people to think you are doing that thing. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yes. That's, 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 that's one thing I learned from somewhere. Yes. And what you're saying is exactly that. Maybe you are not a bad person. Yes. You don't steal. You don't, yes. you don't rob. Mm. But if you leave dreadlocks, you're causing people to think you do it. You do it. But this is not an explanation or a justification that all those who wear dreadlocks, they, they do bad. Exactly. But, but it's, it's, it's a society, the way we think. think. And it takes years and centuries to be able to change this exactly. mentality. Exactly. So exactly. um, I think uh, this is, I'm very, very grateful for this explanations and yes. a lot of questions will pop up. Inshallah, we will still run back to you for more answers. Yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Shaykh, is there anything more? Alhamdulillah, we've expressed our humble opinions no. on such very sensitive issues. No. And we pray that it may, it may be guidance for all of us and Amen. all our listeners. Amen. Amen. And we thank you so much for the time that you spent watching this video. Amen. Amen. Continue to follow us and thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Huna marru wa kanu qudwata lin.